know, had an, an internet breakdown and we couldn't continue, we couldn't actually finish up. So today, we're bringing back the um, Ethiopian story, the interesting, interesting facts about Ethiopia, as well bringing back to you your listening pleasure. Um, Africa is our home, that's our motherland, you know, that's our motherland. We, 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 we have to keep updating and telling ourselves about Africa, reminding, of us, reminding ourselves of um, the continent we belong to. Um, the continent that gave birth to us. Um, we are sons and daughters of Mama Africa. And we should know that, yes, Africa is a great place to be. Um, you are a Ghanaian, and you might probably not have traveled. You might not have traveled out of the country before. Probably this is your, 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 um, this where you've been born, and this where you've been all your life. You've not crossed the border before. So, yes, what we do here with this particular segment or session of the program is to keep you updated, tell you about other African countries, what your appetite, prepare you into wanting to travel to these countries and have a feel of those countries. Because we were talking about Ethiopia, the whole of Africa, the entire African continent was formerly known as Ethiopia before it became Africa. Somebody there will tell you why it became Africa, who named it Africa, how it, became, it moved from Ethiopia to Africa. But before, formerly, the entire continent Africa was known as Ethiopia. Ethiopia. So today we're telling the story of Ethiopia. Yes, from the Ethiopian perspective as a country. More than the Ethiopia, so we're talking about. Yes, yes. Did you know that Ethiopia has 13 months? Did you know that Ethiopia has 13 months in a year? Globally, according to the Gregorian calendar, we have only 12 months in a year. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, and December. And that ends it. That's a year. That's how it is globally. Even the Arab world. That's how it is. We have, we have the Arabian calendar or the, yeah, the Muslim calendar, which also goes around, you know, the same. You know, not exactly the same, but equal months. But it is only Ethiopia that has 13 months in a year. 13 months in a year. So you go to Ethiopia. You know, for over a thousand years, over thousands of years, they've been they've been going around the clock, they've been going around the year thirteen times. Thirteen times a year, thirteen times a year. I mean a year, thirteen months a year. That is how it is for the Ethiopian calendar. And they've been able to stick to it uniquely without distortion. So you go to Ethiopia, yeah, um, um it is twelve months to a year. Uh, not Ethiopia, not Ethiopia. Um, ever looking to um, book a train several thousands of years ago the Ethiopians I mean um, carved out their own year got the 13 months we're talking about and then you go there and they have their own Christmas they have their own most of the things they celebrate in accordance um, it, it's accordance to their calendar which is the 13 year you know Ethiopia has their own time as well um, here one o'clock is um is, is in the afternoon it's in the afternoon no you know afternoon you have one o'clock straight when the sun is scorching you know that's when you have one o'clock that's when you have one o'clock that's p.m and then you have one o'clock a.m at dawn midnight not dawn actually midnight that's how it is here in Ghana. that's how it is in nigeria that's how it is in also everywhere that's how it is but you go to ethiopia though they don't do it that way you go to ethiopia um, sunrise is one o'clock and sunset is twelve o'clock. Sunrise is one o'clock and sunset is twelve. Then the twelve hour, the twelve hour ninth clock sets in. Um, so when buying a bus ticket to Ethiopia, put that into consideration. That for them, um, sunrise is one o'clock and sunset is twelve o'clock. That's an interesting fact about Ethiopia you should know about. And this is quite a popular one, a very popular, popular fact about Ethiopia, yet interesting, that it is the only African country, only African country on the continent of Africa that has never been colonized before, never been colonized before. Yes, they have complete independence, total independence. They owe no allegiance to any colonial master. They own themselves, they are their own. Yes original Ethiopia. So every Ethiopian beat up his chest and say, I have no slave master, I have no Ethiopian. No. And they give credit to Haile Selassie, the emperor of Ethiopia, Haile Selassie, Emperor Haile Selassie the first. That's why they revere him, they honor him, they don't play with him when you go down there in Ethiopia. Ethiopia is the only African country never to have been brought under colonial control. 
So you go there and um, they most of that a lot, even though um, some Italians tried. Italians tried to actually put them under colonization and they resisted. They resisted fiercely. And then uh, uh, put in a militancy, a militancy resistance and got themselves free. And it was only done for six months, I mean six years, for six years. Um, the militants succeeded in occupying the place for only six years and they kicked them out and took the place. So Ethiopia is known to be the only country here in the continent, on the continent of Africa that has never ever been colonized before. They have total independence, you know, and they boast of that a lot, a lot. It's a nation of festivals. Ethiopia is a nation of festivals. They have, variety, they have a variety of festivals. Almost every country has a variety of festivals. You go to Nigeria, when, when you have a variety of ethnic groups, a lot of ethnic groups, we certainly have a variety of festivals. But that of Ethiopia is very exceptional, very pretty, beautiful, colorful. Ethiopia is a country full of vibrant and colorful festivals. You go there, you have the biggest festival, Tinket, you know. Um, it's a three day, it's a three day annual festival that honors the baptism of Jesus Christ in the river Jordan, in the river Jordan. So they don't take, um, they don't take that for a joke at all. It is one of their festivals, one of their colorful festivals. They are religious festival, they are traditional festivals. When you put them all together, in the total, they are colorful festival. They have um, a, a lot of beautiful festivals. Jamaica is the birthplace of the Rastafari movement. Anytime you talk about Rastafari, Rastafari, people tend to Jamaica and they think, say, oh, oh man, Rasta is all about Jamaica. Rasta emanated or started from Jamaica. You know, yes, um, we think so because Jamaicans have money to own, you know, the movement. They have money to propagate the agenda of movement of the movement much more than any other country here. In Africa or in the world, they've managed to actually propagate that more than any other country. So people think it is a Jamaican thing. Yes, of course, it's a Jamaican thing, but they think it originated from Jamaica. But no, the fact is Rastafari, right? the Rastafari movement, you know, you know, um, emanated or started from Ethiopia. So the birthplace of the Rastafari movement is Ethiopia. If you touch Jamaica, uh, a bit wrong, even though it's yes, dominant in Jamaica, much more propagated in Jamaica, but it is actually um, Ethiopia is actually the birthplace of the Rastafari movement. You know, they, they, they love coffee a lot, they love coffee a lot, they don't joke with coffee. Ethiopians are one of the best, they have the best coffee in the world, and they don't joke with coffee. You come to Africa. The best thing you are offered is water. You come to Ghana, as you say, the best thing, the first thing you are offered is water as a stranger. But you go to Ethiopia, the first thing you might probably be you you probably be offered is a cup of coffee, a cup of coffee, the first cup of coffee. They don't joke with it every morning. They never joke with their coffee. They love coffee, and they produce the best coffee in the world. The oldest people in the world are Ethiopians. Yes. Several archaeologists findings in the, I mean, several, several archaeological findings in the Ethiopians' Afa region go quite so weak in suggesting that the country may be where all started, or maybe where we all started from. You know, we all started out from. In 1972, Donald Johnson, one Donald Johnson and Tim D. White discovered Lucy, a 3.2 million year old hominid. I mean, hominid. Skeleton it was discovered in Ethiopia for years. Lucy was all the rage and backing on a nine year worldwide tour and enjoying widespread fame. So, yes, um, archaeological findings are proven or all pointing to the fact that Ethiopia is the oldest place in the world. Oldest place, and it might be where all of us came from. All of us came from, you know, Ethiopia. Um, we have your capital, Addis Ababa. And many of those wondering, um, it is one of the capitals of the African countries. Uh, that sounds so sweet to the ear. Imagine Addis Ababa, and it sounds so, uh, you know, that's where we have the headquarters of the EU. The EU headquarters is situated in Addis Ababa, of course, sponsored by China, but it's situated in Addis Ababa. So, yes, um, Addis Ababa is the capital of Ethiopia. And it is um, a beautiful name. It sounds very sweet to the ear. Um, but it has a meaning. It has a sweet meaning as well. You know, it means new flower. New flower. So if 
Yes, yes. If you've ever been wondering what the meaning of that soup name is, Adisa Baba, it means new 